Good day everyone. Heartly welcome again to this vlog. Here we are, we've entered June. It's June, we're going through the midpoint of the year already. And yeah, what's in my heart, my mind, my soul today? Firstly, I want to thank everybody. Thank you for those who supported us, who helped us, and who joined us with a webinar on the 31st and Monday past. It worked out well, everything didn't go perfectly according to technology, but I think the message got across. And I thank you all for your help and support, and I thank you all for your positive feedback post the webinar. And I encourage you all to go and join. Those who haven't had the opportunity, as I said in the, in the webinar, do not despair. The recording is there, go and order your ticket, and the recording will be sent out immediately to you. To the technical team i also apologize to those who did not receive the link in time again i hope you can understand that sometimes technology and technical things don't go the way we plan it to go but you will get the recording too so yes what came up in the webinar and it's something that's been burning a, a profound question came up regarding a child when we have a child that is being punished and being seen as aggressive but in actual fact that child is not trying to be aggressive and it stemmed from where I presented the vestibular system and the proprioceptive system and where you get the child that doesn't know their own strength and they don't know their own 3D spatial awareness and they do not know how to navigate their bodies through space so this child could be out there trying to play with their peers, could be out there trying to show affection actually, but because they do not know the awareness of their body in space, because they do not know their own strength, they may come across as aggressive. What may have wanted to be an affectionate touch could turn out to be a shove. What may have wanted to be a, an affectionate stroke could turn out to be a smack. And it may seem like it was aggression towards their fellow peers or aggression towards their teacher or aggression towards whoever was in their presence at that time. And what happens? Often these children get expelled or they get punished, they put in the bowl corner, whatever you want to refer to it as, they get grounded, they lose whatever reinforcements they may have received. And what have we done? A child has just been punished for something that they did not know and did not mean to do. And this is not good for the child's mental health and emotional well-being at all. And the question then arose from a parent and where the parents made the statement, that is my child, that's my child. What do I do? How do I, what, how do I go about? How do I get the teachers to and the principals to know and understand that my child is not actually trying to be aggressive. My child is actually trying to play. My child is actually trying to be affectionate. But unfortunately, because of his sensory processing issues, it's coming across as aggression. And my answer, I think, wasn't the most efficient answer or the best answer on the, on, on the night. Where I said, yes, firstly, we have to get the staff that, and the carers involved with the child to have a bit more compassion. But then also, we need to empower those staff members, those carers, those persons, yeah, with the skills and the knowledge on why. Why is it not aggression? Why is it that this child is coming across aggressive? Okay, and it's all because of your sensory processing issues. So yes, we need to get the information out there. Then yes, we also need to empower the staff, the carers, all those involved with the child with the skills to be able to deal with it. To yes, firstly have compassion, as I said on Monday night, and understand that this is not the, the original intention. Aggression was not the original intention for the child. Have compassion with the child. But instead of just trying to punish or go after the child for what they did to be able to stop stand back and think and say to ourselves what can we do but now also I want us as parents especially and other professionals outside of the of the education system we also need to have compassion for the teaching staff why do I say that? Because sometimes the law, the circulars that's out there, there is a law, there is a circular that's out there that teachers, principals has to go by. And often these laws, these circulars does not 
actually support our child with added and complex needs. It does not support the child with sensory processing issues. The circular may say that if a child shows aggression to teacher, the immediate reaction that the principal should take is expulsion. Yeah? From not, or not expulsion or whatever the word may be. Um, I can't get to the word. What's the word now? Suspended. Suspended from school. Yeah? So... That's what, the, that's what the, the, the staff has to go by, that's the circular. This child has just shown aggression, whether they've added in complex needs, whether they're neurotypical, whatever. If a child has aggressive outbursts towards staff or students, suspension is the first protocol, and then whatever the process after that needs to be followed. Okay, but in saying that, that doesn't help our child that or the person with added and complex needs. That actually puts added stress on the child that they already doesn't understand. They don't understand their own strength. They don't understand their own bodies. They don't understand how their bodies are working in relation to the environments around them and the persons around them. And here they're getting punished over and over and over and, and it's a vicious cycle. And then you have the child that comes across and they have no respect for authority anymore because it constantly seems like authority just misunderstands them. Yeah, and we have this vicious cycle. So, I just thought I'll bring in this vlog for those parents that find them child, their children being branded aggressive, and you yourself know that is not the the case for your child. Yes, we gotta go and advocate, advocate. We gotta go and speak up for our child. And when I say we gotta go fight for our child, I don't mean fight as in go in there and give out to teachers and everything else. No, go in there. Like man, the night we heard the, the, the main ingredients is loving, nurturing, reciprocal back and forth communication between us. Same that loving, nurturing back and forth communication, reciprocal communication between us as parents, as staff, as caregivers, and to all involved with the child. We need to get out there and we need to be sitting down and speaking, speaking for the best interest of the child that needs our help. We need to speak. Speak, 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 and speak with love. Speak with a nurturing attitude. Speak with an attitude that we want to help the child. We don't want to blame the child. We don't want to put the child down. We want to help the child. And when we start speaking and we start trying to assess the whole situation and trying to pinpoint where is the problem actually stemming from and we discover, oh, it is a sensory processing issue, then let's speak about what can we do to help us this child overcome. We cannot expect a child with sensory processing issues with vestibular, proprioceptive or any other sensory system issues and it's leading to behaviors or what seems to be inappropriate behaviors we cannot expect that child to just change we as adults in the child's life as carers it is our task to help the child it is our task to provide the child with the tools to be able to understand their own selves their own persons their own mental health their own emotional health their own awareness within the environments and and in relation to other parents we are there to help them gain that understanding and until such time that we have done what we can do to help the child self-regulate we can never blame the child for the inappropriate behaviors yeah we need to be helpful supportive loving nurturing caregivers to all children with added and complex needs and like i said in the webinar added and complex needs doesn't mean the child cannot learn oh they have a diagnosis oh they oh so they're just gonna always be like that no it just means they need added intervention added input added stimulation of their sensory processing system added care added explanations of their social skills added explanations of identifying how do they identify their emotions there's so many things out there the zones of regulation there's there's so many models out there that we can try and marry to every individual because not every one model works for every child let's just get past that yes we can have the most wonderful model of treatment and therapeutic interventions and stuff like that and the book says that and the book says that but it's not always that the book is going to work for that individual we need to get to know that individual and we need to put in a plan that is going to best support that individual best support that family best support that community whether it's the school community the leisure community wherever problems are arising and that's what we need to 
go about and it starts with communication communication in this case is key pass and gone with the days where a parent should feel oh i cannot speak to the professional because they are so high in their knowledge and da, da, da. or I, 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 I can't go tell them that this and that about my child that i might come across as the parent that's just complaining and all this and gone with those days let us advocate let us come together let us come together with an attitude we all here as a team to help our children our adolescents and our young adults to develop their brains so that they can be the best adults into the future they are the future they are our future let us not let us not block their progress let us not block the success into the future but let us come with an attitude of help so i thank you everybody for listening now again into this vlog i encourage us all go back as i said in the web now go back let us empower ourselves with as much knowledge as possible let us speak to one another let us collaborate and let us see what we can always do to help the ultimate aim is always to help and to support and we want to do that with that loving nurturing caring nature all a child needs is that one person that one person that is for them that one person that is there to just give them that, that loving caring nature and yes don't get me wrong the hope is that all for, all for my children especially i hope it's not only the one person it's not only the one teacher but it's all the staff it is all in the community it is everybody that is there for my child you know that is has the compassion has the loving has the nurturing has the wonderful attitude to always want to help and support their neighbor okay so i encourage us all let's work together let's keep collaborating and i hope this brings added um, answers for those parents that came up with the questions on monday evening and for those that out there that wasn't even part of vlog and is only listening to this vlog now that look don't be scared don't be scared Pull up the courage, pull up the inspiration and going with the right attitude. I'm going to go speak to the professionals on behalf of my child that cannot advocate for themselves. I'm going to go and collaborate with them so that we can establish the best learning environment for our children. And so that our children can grow and progress and become meaningful, positive, purposeful contributors to society in the future. Thank you everybody. I look forward to our next webinar. That will be announced soon, so stay connected, stay subscribed here, click the subscribe button, click that bell button if you haven't yet. And um, so that way you will always stay updated with what events is coming up. And I hope that future events will also contribute to our ultimate aim is to empower parents, empower staff, empower all caregivers of all children. Not just children with added and complex needs and diagnosis, but for all children, for society in the whole, that we want to help empower us with not only the knowledge, but the skills. There's no point having knowledge, but you don't have the wisdom how to use it. And you don't have the skills how to use it. You're just going to break down. You're just going to be a broken record, speaking words that has no impact. We want to have an impact. We want to be there hands-on close like i closed with a quote on on monday evening there is no app to replace the lap there is no app to replace the lap there is nothing in technology or whatever else to replace our close touch and relationship and attachment with our children okay and it is our duty to foster that good mental health and emotional well-being within our children and within our adolescents and within our adults especially those living with added special and complex needs so i wish everybody a blessed day further a good day further good week further and a good month of june further and i'll see you at the next vlog next week all the very best